This is video 2 on functions of two variables. We covered several definitions in video 1, so if you missed that one, please go back and watch it first. I will assume that you have already seen the definitions that we will discuss in this video. Example, z equals f of xy equals the natural log of 1 minus x squared plus y. We are asked to find and sketch the domain of f of xy. Since we'll be sketching the domain, I'll need an xy grid with axes labeled. Now let's look at the type of function. We have a natural log function, and we know that the input of natural log must be positive. Since the input is 1 minus x squared plus y, we have that the domain is 1 minus x squared plus y is strictly greater than 0. Solve this for y to get it into a form that we, we recognize, and we have y is greater than x squared minus 1. In set notation, this would be all xy in R2 such that y is greater than x squared minus 1. Remember the curvy E symbol can mean in, and the vertical bar is read as such that. Let's plot some points on our grid for the parabola y equals x squared minus 1. We know that the y-intercept is at 0, negative 1, and we also have the points negative 1, 0, negative 2, 3, 1, 0, and 2, 3. Because my domain has a strict inequality, we have to draw the parabola with a dotted line. Since y is greater than the parabola, we shade above or inside of the parabola. I'll add some arrows to indicate that the region goes up infinitely. And there's our, our domain. All xy ordered pairs that satisfy y is greater than x squared minus 1. Second, let's find the range of f of xy. Our function is z equals the natural log of 1 minus x squared plus y. Let's start with a two-dimensional version of a natural log. y equals the natural log of x. So here's our two-dimensional version. We know from algebra that the range of natural log is all real numbers. If you forget, graph the two-dimensional version in your calculator as a reminder. The range for the three-dimensional graph will also be all real numbers, but the output variable is z. So the range is z is all real numbers, which can also be written as r. Next, we are asked to find the boundary of the function's domain. Remember the boundary is all points that, if you drew an infinitely small disk around the point, the disk would contain points both inside and outside of the domain region. We already found that the domain is y greater than x squared minus 1, which translates to all points above the parabola y equals x squared minus 1. Let's look at a point on the parabola y equals x squared minus 1. If I draw a small disk around that point, the disk contains points both inside and outside of the shaded region. So that point on the parabola is a boundary point. In fact, all points on the parabola are boundary points. Remember, a region does not have to contain its boundary, so even though our domain has strict inequality, 
the parabola y equals x squared minus 1 can still be the boundary. Also, notice that a boundary is always an equation with equality, even if that equality is not present in the domain. So we have the boundary of the domain is y equals x squared minus 1 with equality. Next, we want to look at, is the domain an open region, a closed region, both, or neither? Recall that a closed region contains all of the boundary points. An open region contains no boundary points. So the only way a region could be both is if there's no boundary. We'll see an example of this in the last video for this section. The only way that a region could be neither is if it contained some, but not all, of the boundary points. In our example, we found that the domain is y strictly greater than x squared minus 1. So a boundary exists. The boundary is the parabola y equals x squared minus 1. But the domain does not include any boundary points since the domain uses a strict inequality causing us to use a dotted line for the parabola in the graph. So a boundary exists, but the domain does not contain any of the boundary points, so the domain is open. Last, is the domain bounded or unbounded? Well, we have the graph of the domain, all points above the parabola. Notice that the shaded region goes up forever to infinity. So the domain cannot be contained since it continues to infinity, so it is unbounded. Be sure not to confuse the idea of open-closed with the idea of bounded-unbounded. It is possible for a region to be closed and unbounded, as we saw in the first video for the section. Be sure to learn the definitions that we used in this video as they're not on the formula sheet.